Good evening. Welcome to worship at First Baptist Church Colco for Sunday evening, January the 10th. Um, just a couple of announcements. I made these announcements this morning. We have reached our Lottie Moon uh, Christmas offering for foreign missions. We have reached our goal of $2,000. In fact, I think we've gone over just a little bitty bit. But if you still want to give to that, um, it'll be another week or so before we send that off. So you may bring your offerings by the church or mail them in. And if you are joining us at home via Facebook or watching this on YouTube and you want to give an offering to the church, remember that you can bring it by or mail it to P.O. Box 205 in Holka. Um, we're having our business meeting after the service tonight when the live stream ends. Men's Bible study begins this Thursday at 6 o'clock. And remember that when you're buying your groceries this week, if you want to buy something for the food pantry, the items that are needed are noodles and rice, ramen noodles, canned soups and chilies, cereal, Pop-Tarts, peanut butter, jelly, saltine crackers, oatmeal, and any kind of snack items. So those things are always welcome in the food pantry. Our call to worship tonight is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. <laughs> Jesus is calling me. 
thank you once again, Miss Melinda, for that special tonight. As we will be in Matthew chapter 11, looking at verses 25 through 30, as we are going to see here how Jesus offers rest. And we are continuing to go through some of the passages that are seen uh, in your Follow Me devotional as we are going through that 50-day journey looking at the calling of the disciples and how Jesus would use those disciples to offer rest to the world. We still need to be offering rest to the world. There's a world out there who does not know Jesus as Savior and Lord of their life. They may know stories, they may know things, but they don't know Jesus. And that's what we begin to see here in Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30, is Jesus has been addressing unrepentant nations. He's been re uh, addressing unrepentant cities, people who were rejecting the message, people who were not listening to what he had to say, people who thought that they had it all figured out, that they already knew what they needed to know. They were following a list of rules. They were following a list of regulations. They were burdened down by religion, but they did not have a relationship that would bring them rest. And the rest that Jesus offered here comes only through a relationship with him. And that is what we need to understand today is that Jesus is still offering a relationship, not religion. He is not offering a burden that weighs us down and that causes us uh, pain and suffering. But Jesus offers rest. And so tonight, we can ask ourselves the question, why was Jesus offering rest? And if you were to ask that question, there are three answers, I believe, that we could consider from that question. Tonight, we're going to see that Jesus offered rest to point people to the Father. We as Christians today are still to be pointing people to the Father. We'll notice that Jesus offered rest to reveal His authority. We are not walking in our own authority. We are not walking according to our own power. But the power that we have been given tonight comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ and the presence of His Holy Spirit in our life. And Jesus offered rest from the burden of religion. Those are the three things that we will notice tonight. And in verses 25 through 27, you'll notice that Jesus offered rest, and in so doing, he was pointing the people who would listen to him and who will listen to him now. He was pointing people to the Father. He was pointing to the fact that he had a relationship with the Father, and through our relationship with Jesus Christ, we have direct access to the throne room of grace, and we can come boldly and mightily into the presence of God, and we can lift up our prayers, and we can lift up our petitions to Him, and we can have that type of communication that God the Son and God the Father had. Jesus was revealing the Father here in these verses. Beginning in verse 25, he said, At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. <clears throat> Excuse me. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you now. We thank you that you revealed yourself to us. We're thankful that we have responded to your message, that we have responded to this offer. And Lord, so we pray tonight that you would continue to help us to serve you passionately, that we would live to honor and glorify you and that we would point others to you. We would point others to the rest that can be found through a relationship with you. And Lord, we pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus here in verses 25 through 27 is communicating with the Father. 
and he is communicating to the Father with joy. It wasn't a burden for him to go to the Father and talk to the Father and communicate with the Father. It was a joy for him to communicate with the Father. It was a joy for him to spend time in his presence. And we talked about in the previous verses, 20 through 24 specifically, he has kind of addressed uh, people who weren't listening to him, who weren't heeding the message, who weren't repenting, who weren't turning from their sin, who weren't answering the call to repent. And he says here in this prayer, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you that you have hid these things from the wise and prudent. He knew that there were going to be those in the audience who weren't listening to what he said at this time who didn't want to hear what he was having to say. They didn't want to give up those lists of rules and regulations. They didn't want to give over the power and the authority. They were serving self. They were living for self. They were happy in doing that. It wasn't bringing them joy. It wasn't bringing them peace. It wasn't bringing them comfort. And yet they did not want to hear the message. They did not want to believe what Jesus was saying. And he said, so while you have hidden things from the wise and prudent, he said, I'm thankful tonight that you have revealed these things unto babes, unto the simple, unto the common people that would become his disciples. We talked about last week as we began to look at this a series of sermons that goes along with this devotional book that these were common men, that these were ordinary men. There was nothing special about them. There was nothing outstanding about them. They came from a common area. They had common occupations. They had not been to the seminaries of the day. They had not studied under certain rabbis and all those types of things. And yet Jesus is saying, God, you have revealed yourself unto them. You have shown yourself to them. And that's what we have to understand tonight. We're here and we've entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ because he revealed himself to us. If he had never revealed himself to us, we wouldn't have known our need for salvation. But he chose to reveal himself to us. And not only has he chosen to reveal himself to us, but once we enter into a relationship with him, he wants us to continue to reveal him to the world, to show the world that he has made a difference in our life, that he has made an impact in our life, that he's continuing to make a difference in our life, that he's continuing to make an impact in our life. And it should be evident in our life to those that we come in contact with that we communicate with the Father, and that the Father communicates to us. There is joy in His presence. There is joy found in communicating with Him. Jesus said, All things, in verse 27, are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. And so as we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, we can know the Father. We can know His heart. We can know His character. We can know of His love. We can know of His mercy. We can know of His grace. We can know of His will, His plan for our life. Matthew eleven twenty seven 27 reveals much to us about the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. There were no secrets between the Father and the Son. There was an open line of communication there and they understood each other. The, they knew each other well. They could communicate with each other because of that. And so as we grow, as we progress in our relationship with Jesus, it should then bolster and strengthen our prayer life and the communication that we have with the Father. Because He knows our heart. And we know Him. And as we know Him more, and as we realize that He knows us, we communicate. We, there's a joy there, being in His presence, knowing that He's listening to us, 
knowing that he hears our prayers, that he hears our petitions, that he knows our burdens, that he knows our weaknesses, that he knows everything about us, and yet he chooses to continue to reveal himself to us. It should <laughs> cause us to boldly come into his presence and it be a joy to communicate with him. What we'll see here is that there is an important difference in the way that the Son knows the Father and the way that we may know Him. We know that we know God the Father because He chose to stoop low and make Himself known. God the Son knows God the Father because they are equal in nature. They are completely compatible with one another. Jesus here is warning His listeners, those who He was talking to then, and those of us now who are still listening to his word, reading his word, he wants us to know that God will happily hide answers from those who don't think that they need God. But he will also happily reveal himself to those who do need God and understand that they need God. The only way to have access to our Father who hides things from self-sufficient people is through a knowing and trusting heart and through a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. It's important that we understand that in verse 28, whenever Jesus said, come unto me, that was the invitation for those listening to experience salvation. Jesus offered rest to point people to the Father, and he also offered rest to reveal his authority there in verse 28, because it is only Jesus who can offer salvation. He didn't say, come unto a list of rules. He didn't say, come unto a list of regulations. He didn't say, come into a relationship with one of the other lowercase gods of the day. He said, come unto me. Salvation is is through faith in Jesus Christ alone. There is nothing to be added to it. There is nothing to be taken away from it. And there is only one way in to heaven. It is not, there are not many roads that lead to one place. Jesus didn't say, come unto me, but you can also follow Buddha or Confucius or any of these other things. He said, come unto me. It's why he would later say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. He is the only one that has the authority to save. He is the only one that has the authority to offer rest. I can't save anyone, but I can point them to the one who can. Jesus saved. And Jesus was offering that day to those people who would listen. And ultimately we know the 12 men who would make up the apostles salvation through a relationship with him. Only Jesus can offer you and give you rest. Will you come unto him today? Will you heed that Today, will you listen to that today? He said, come unto me. Who needs to come unto him? <laughs> he says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. What he is pointing out there is what he will go on further in and talk about in verses 29 and 30. He was addressing the religious leaders of the day. He was addressing those people who thought that they were following Moses and the teaching of Moses. And as long as they did all of the things that were talked about in Deuteronomy, and if they followed all of the Levitical laws, and if they kept all of the rules and regulations and went to the temple the prescribed amount of times and prayed as often as they were supposed to pray and fasted as often as they were supposed to fast and did all these things that they were okay and Jesus is revealing to them that all those things were worthless. He was talking about how that form of righteousness was worthless. It was useless. 
And so he is saying here, come unto me, follow me, and I will give you rest. There are people tonight who need rest. They need to know that they can experience rest. And it isn't from doing, it's from coming to Jesus. We place our faith and trust in Jesus. Have you done that tonight? To rest is to put your burdens in the hands of God and enjoy His provision. Enjoy the forgiveness and eternal life that is only available through a relationship with Him. The problem that the religious leaders of the day had is what we need to address in verses 29 and 30 because it's still a problem that we see many under today. There are many who need to experience rest and Jesus offered rest from the burden of religion because in verses 29 and 30, he said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your soul. And so Jesus said in verse 28, All you who are laboring and heavy laden, I will give you rest. So he said, take my yoke upon you. Now what's he talking about? He's talking about that once we enter into a relationship with him, we are to become a disciple. And a disciple is one who learns. And so we are to learn from him. And he is saying, I have experience. I know I can give you rest. And so yoke up with me. Enter into a relationship with me. And I will lead you in the direction that you need to go in. There will be no more of this heavy labor that is useless and unproductive. But I will help you to be productive. And to find rest while you work while you serve. That's the picture that we see here is that we are to come as disciples willing to learn and easily guide. He said, I will guide you. I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I know the burden, the passion that I have laid upon your heart. That's what we see. The religious leaders were living for self. And there are many people in our world today who are living for self. They are serving self. And it's heavy and it's burdensome to them. Think about it. You would ask some people today, what is it, what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that you're living for? And they would say, money. I get money any way that I can get it. I spend all of my time, effort, pursuing money. And why do they need all that money? Why do they need all that? Because they're wanting to gain more possessions. They're wanting to store up more earthly treasures. It's not giving them rest. It's not bringing them peace. It's not bringing them joy. They are burdened down by that. There are those who seek fame. There are those who seek all of these things that the world has to offer. And yet Jesus is saying, if you will come to me, if you will learn of me, if you will be a disciple who disciples others, who passionately pursues the relationship that you can have with Jesus Christ, passionately pursue the burden, so to speak, the passion of your heart, what it is that God has called you to do. If you will passionately pursue that, you will find rest unto your souls. He didn't say that the disciples were going to come to him and learn of him and then be able to kick back in their lazy chair somewhere. There was still work for them to do. And they were going to travel through Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth spreading the gospel. And they would face severe persecution. And 
except for John being exiled on the Isle of Patmos, most of them would be uh, murdered in some way, martyred in some way for the faith. But yet Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light because these men found a relationship, not religion. The Jews commonly used the yoke to express obligation to God. The people of the day were under the yoke of the kingdom, the yoke of the law, the yoke of the command, the yoke of repentance, the yoke of faith, and then the general yoke of God. No wonder these people were so burdened down. No wonder they were many times uh, found not having joy and peace and comfort and all those things. But when you come to Jesus, He gives you rest in terms of your salvation. When you accept the yoke of discipleship, you find rest and you experience rest and peace in your daily life. It's not that the burdens go away. They're there, but God, Tony Evans said, can put wheels on your burdens so that you can deal with them more easily. And so tonight, as we've looked at Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30, and as you look through this during your uh, devotional time each day, you'll notice that Jesus offered rest to point people to the Father. Each day, as you look in the Word, as you read the Word, as you study the Word, as you pray over the Word, allow yourself to be pointed to the Father, to learn more about Him, to draw closer to Him, to communicate with Him. Remember that it is only Jesus that has the authority to offer rest, to offer salvation. And so take opportunities that you're given to point people to Jesus so that they might have this same opportunity that you have, that they might rest, that they might surrender to Jesus Christ and experience salvation. There are people tonight who need to be set free from the burden of religion. And you may be one of those people who have been doing rather than coming. That you think that church attendance may save you or you think that uh, following a list of rules or regulations may bring you rest and you need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ tonight. What we need to understand as we close out tonight is that there is a lack of power over our lives and there are sins that do easily and quickly entangle us. But we are to surrender ourselves to God's loving care. Because as we do that, when we do that, we will begin to understand that He has all the power we need. He is the one who has the power to redeem us. He is the one that can help break free and help us break free from the tangle of sinful habits and things that hinder us in our walk with Him. And so tonight, if you do not know Jesus as your Savior, will you come unto Him, surrender to Him your life, learn of Him, and then go and share His love, His mercy, His grace, tell of His excellent goodness to others. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you now. We thank you for this, another opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, I pray if there's someone burdened down tonight by their sin, that they would surrender their all to you tonight, that they would yoke up with you, become a disciple of Jesus Christ, and that they would know of the rest and peace and comfort that is found in serving you. And Lord, help us as your servants tonight to be dedicated, to passionately pursue the calling that you've placed upon our life, to use the gift or gifts that you've equipped us with by the Holy Spirit to share the gospel and evangelize the world. And Lord, we pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Miss Belinda is going to...